Hello and welcome to the seventh magazine monologue. Uh, this monologue is going to be coming from the same double issue of Time, May 10, May 17, 100 Most Influential Companies. It actually comes from the cover picture. The title of the article is Decoding COVID-19. It is written by Alice Park, who is a staff writer at Time, who focuses on health and medical issues. The article actually really isn't about COVID-19 as much as you would think based on the title. The article is about the company Illumina, and it's kind of seen similar to the Reese Witherspoon shifting the narrative article. It's another like pseudo conversation with uh, the president and CEO, Francis D'Souza. What Illumina does is they manufacture genetic sequencing equipment, and they have a very large market share, like just to be clear. So of the COVID-19 samples that have been sequenced and then put up on a public database, the over 70% of them have been performed on Illumina machines. Uh, that is really the only um, connection between the article and the title. The title would make you think that it's going to just talk about COVID-19 forever. It doesn't. It kind of talks more. It talks a little bit about COVID-19, as does everything in today's age, right? But it's more about genetic sequencing's ability. So before COVID-19, genetic sequencing was not used as prevalently in public health and infectious diseases, uh, monitoring and treatment and et cetera, as it probably should have been. But what's happened with COVID-19, and if you've seen the um, video about the Zoom diplomacy that I did, I want to say off the top of my head it was episode four, uh, it's just accelerated us towards something that was probably inevitable anyways. So now there's a lot more genetic sequencing happening in public health spaces than there were previously because with COVID-19, you can track these slight genetic mutations to figure out if uh, the infections are coming from like outside of your geographic area, within your geographic area. Uh, is it going to get deadlier? Is it going to get uh, more infectious? Things like that. There's, you know, there's the UK variant, the Indian triple mutant variant, I believe I heard yesterday on the news. Um, the Brazil variant, like they always kind of name them by location is colloquially, although their official names are like B.1.7.1 or something like that. Um, and that's all from genetic sequencing. So the reason that it's been able to progress this far is because there are companies like Illumina who are constantly advancing the technology. The first human genome map, just again, not COVID-19 related, the first human genome map took about 13 years to complete. And now Illumina produces a uh, piece of equipment which can map a human genome in about an hour. Uh, I didn't do the math, but that is, you know, like a multi-thousand fold increase in speed. Uh, and so, and the human genome, I should point out, is considered to be among the most complex on earth. I'm not certain it is the most complex, uh, but it is definitely one of the most complex. So if you can do human genome in an hour, you can probably do COVID-19, I would assume, significantly faster. Uh, I'm not a biologist. I don't know if maybe viruses have harder genomes to do. I have no idea. I'm not a biologist. But I'm just putting it in perspective that Illumina has made these leaps and bounds, and they say that their goal is to get it even faster and cheaper. Right now, it costs Illumina about $600 commercially to do a human genome. And so you can assume that the actual cost to Illumina is lower than 600, but they basically that's the commercial price is 600. And their goal is to get that down to 100 in the next few years. So if it's cheaper and faster, you're going to see genetic sequencing popping up all over the world for all sorts of things. Uh, post COVID, we're still going to have the flu. We're still going to have um, Ebola. We're still going to have uh, E. coli. Like we're going to have all of these dis diseases that we had before. Um, bacteria, viruses, whatever. So with genetic sequencing, you can keep track of kind of what's coming from where, um, how things are mutating. You can create treatment plans and work on vaccines and work on tracing significantly more efficiently. Uh, not every country in the world has the ability to spend the resources that uh, developed nations have. You know, the just state of Michigan, for example, or um, state of Indiana or state of California or wherever. 
is going to have significantly more money to pour into genetic sequencing machines than um, a health clinic in uh, a developing nation would, like Haiti, for example. Because they, they say in the article that it costs them about a million dollars to make it to the machine's price is about a million dollars. I don't I don't, don't like to conflate price and cost because if they're selling it for a million, they're making it for less than a million. But they say the price is a million dollars for a machine. So because not every country is able to procure these machines, and I say country, but it could be state or county or whatever, procure these on their own. Uh, last year in 2020, Illumina actually donated genetic sequencing machines to about 10 different uh, public health units in African nations to help them with their sequencing. And in 2021, actually just in April, Illumina partnered with the Gates Foundation to uh, provide training and equipment to the developing nation at large for sequencing projects, specifically diseases, right? But speak sequencing projects. They are going to start in South Asia, and they didn't say what their next region would be, but I'm going to assume it will be somewhere in Africa. Um, it's possible that it's somewhere in Latin America, but really, my gut would tell me anywhere that has a tropical developing nation, which is most of the countries around the equator, um, mostly because that is the idea slash fear that most diseases come from those places. Uh, the biodiversity is significantly larger in the tropics than it is in the Arctic. Uh, the article was, again, good, but short. I mean, there, like I said, there's got 100 plus articles in here, and this is one of the longer ones. It was about two and a half, maybe three pages. Uh, it was nice. It did bring up the fact that because of the market share of Illumina, there are fears, at least within the United States government, regarding monopoly power. So in March, the Federal Trade Commission brought a lawsuit trying to prevent Illumina from purchasing a cancer test company uh, called Grail. It doesn't say in the article what has happened or is happening with the lawsuit. I'm going to assume it's still ongoing. Um, antitrust lawsuits, antitrust being anti-monopoly power, anti-competition can last for a very, very long time. I would not be surprised if it's still in, you know, pre-trial um, discovery. Uh, that said, those are probably going to be the only two articles that I'm gonna talk about in this edition of Time. If for whatever reason there is something in here that you would like for me to touch on explicitly, let me know. Uh, otherwise, we will move on and it is likely that I'm going to do a foreign affairs essay for episode eight. Uh, but yeah, thank you.